we got to talk about Johnny Ive. So, I mean, so much news from OpenAI this week, but $6.5 billion to buy I.O., which, of course, Johnny Ive, the designer of the iPhone, this iconic name in Silicon Valley. How did you come up with the number, though? This company doesn't even have a product. Tell us about how you came up with that math. So for a start, when you're thinking about what's the opportunity, we're in a brand new era of computing. And if you think about every era previously, like the PC for the Internet age, mm -hmm. um, the phone for the mobile age, Johnny was really at the nexus of a lot of these, right? What the graphical user interface would look like on the PC. And the phone, when we got to touch, it was kind of incredible. Mm -hmm. And so we believe that as you birth this new era of AI, there's going to be new platforms and new substrates the way people experience it. I think it's personally going to be a lot more multimodal. So we think of tech today a little bit more around touch. Mm -hmm. But we as humans, we see things, we hear things, we talk. And so our models are great at that. And so we were excited to work with the best in the business on that. How do you value that? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's very hard to value something in that early phase. You're really betting on great people. And beyond uh, Johnny, we were just talking about it before we started, mm -hmm. there is an incredible team. Because it's not just about imagining what a new platform could look like. But then you've got to be able to craft it. You've got to be able to build it. You've got to be able to understand supply mm -hmm. chains. And I just love his team. Uh, Tang Tan deserves a total mm -hmm. shout out as someone who helped build the iPhone, build Air AirPods, build the watch. Um, we've got a lot of great talent. It's in there. a great point that it's not just Johnny. It's a lot mm -hmm. of the top executives, exactly. former executives from Apple. What's the commercial opportunity? When you think about return mm -hmm. on that investment, regardless yeah. of how much you spend up front, What's the eventual opportunity in hardware? Yeah, the opportunity, I think, is first of all, how do we get people more and more excited to use AI? Um, so how do we get that platform out into the world? Mm -hmm. And I think when you start thinking about it beyond just a phone, mm -hmm. um, I think it starts to grab the imagination. So if we can get people around the world excited to use AI, we have many ways mm -hmm. to begin to think of a business model around that. So it could be an ongoing bigger subscription mm -hmm. for, um, for ChatGPT. Yeah. Um, it's getting attach rates. Remember today, across our user base, the vast majority actually use our product for free. Mm -hmm. And that's on purpose because we want to make sure AI gets into the hands of everyone. But getting you to that point where you see the value to upgrade, mm -hmm. that's with new products. So most recently, ImageGen, when it went viral at the end of March, that was a moment where we saw people fall in love again with yeah. what AI could do, but also start to subscribe more because they would hit, effectively our paywall would have to come up because right. it starts to get expensive. And I think hardware is just a part of that next value add we put into the product. You have partnered with Apple, though, before. Why not just team up with them on devices? I mean, I think it goes back to what we were talking about with infrastructure, mm -hmm. that we want to work with many partners. Mm -hmm. Like, when we single thread ourselves, we don't think that drives max innovation. Mm -hmm. So we continue to work closely with Apple on their device, and we'd love to see more and more being done with AI so that can really work with that device in a multimodal way. Mm -hmm. But we also want to kind of keep sparking innovation broadly in the ecosystem.